kind of doesn't matter what you do. At some point, if you are playing a larger adventure, you're going to have to pick a lock. You could try to get through an entire adventure just by forcing things open and trying to break your way through, but you're not going to have a lot of stealth there. You could attract a lot of attention and you could break what you're trying to actually pick. So pick a lock is a very good trained thief reaction that could allow you to bypass these locks. And if you're really good at it, you could not leave a trace that you even came through. So let's go ahead and take a look at pick a lock. My name is Don. I'm trying to be the sly strategist and let's go ahead and get into it. So once again, pick a lock is a trained thievery action. It can be done in exploration and it can be done in encounter mode. It is really super useful to have because it allows you to not destroy what you're trying to get past, unlike something like Force Open Wood. But let's go ahead and take a look at the pick a lock action and then we'll look at some of the things that are surrounding it. And then we're gonna take it all the way into Foundry to show how it actually works. But pick a lock is a two action action. It does have the manipulate trait and it is also going to be skill, so it has the skill trait as well. The requirements are you are holding or wearing a thieves toolkit. Now, opening a lock without a key is very similar to disabling a device, but the DC of the check is determined by the complexity and construction of the lock you are attempting to pick. And we're gonna go ahead and talk about what the general standard is for locks here in just a second. But locks of higher quality might require multiple successes to unlock. If you lack the proper tools, the GM might let you use improvised picks, which are going to be treated as a shoddy toolkit. A shoddy toolkit is a shoddy item, and there's actually kind of a rule for shoddy items, and we're gonna cover that as well. But let's go ahead and start by taking a look at locks. So there are some standards for locks within Pathfinder 2nd Edition, but it is kind of up to GM discretion, but let's go ahead and take a look at what they say. So picking a poor lock requires two successful DC 15 thievery checks. A simple lock requires three successful DC 20 thievery checks. Average lock requires four successes at DC 25. A good lock requires five successes at DC 30, and a superior lock requires six successes at DC 40. So you're gonna to need to have your training kind of up there. But you can get past any of these locks with the right roll and multiple successes. Even a poor lock requires two successful DC 15 thievery checks. Now in the reading of the pick a lock action, they did have that mention of a shoddy toolkit. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at shoddy items. So shoddy items are improvised or of dubious nature. Generally speaking, you're not gonna be able to buy these at an adventuring store, but you could get them in back alleys or maybe in an impoverished community. But when they are available, they usually cost half the price of a standard item, though you can't sell them because no one is gonna buy them from you. And anything you find or improvised is going to be considered shoddy. So attacks and checks involving a shoddy item take a negative two item penalty, and this is going to include your thievery checks. So you are going to take a negative two item penalty on all your thievery checks when attempting to pick a lock. But let's go ahead and take a look at the success conditions and the four degrees of success that this one has. So on a critical success, you unlock the lock, or you achieve two successes towards opening a lock that requires more than one success. Remember, according to the book, even a poor lock required two successes at DC 15. So a critical success will allow you to kind of do it all in one. You leave no trace of your tampering on a critical success. On a success, you open the lock or you achieve one single success towards opening a lock that requires more than one success. You leave behind damage that indicates the lock was picked on close scrutiny. On a failure, you generally just don't do anything. However, you probably are still gonna leave behind damage that indicates that you did something to the lock. And on a critical failure, you break your toolkit and leave behind obvious damage. You can fix it using crafting to repair it, or you could swap in some replacement picks, or you could use an improvised toolkit and treat it as a shoddy item and take that negative two item penalty. But now that we've kind of established that, let's go ahead and take it into Foundry and just see how it would actually work. Now here in Foundry, we see Craig's already in a cell, so let's go ahead and set the scene. So basically, Emily was out in a city doing the roguey things that rogues do and attracted the attention of some evil guards. Well, the guards started chasing the party and Craig, having the lowest movement speed, got caught. So our intrepid party is here to try to spring him from the dungeon cell beneath the evil castle. Craig is here in the cell and Sly is trying to tell him what the plan is and Emily is here attempting to pick the lock. So let's go ahead and 
start the pick the lock action. We're going to treat this as a standard lock, and that standard lock is going to require three attempts at a DC 20. So we'll go ahead and attempt to pick a lock, and we'll do thievery, and we'll hit our roll. And Emily rolled a 28 on a DC 20, so that is going to count as a single success. We have two more successes to go. We're going to go ahead and attempt to pick a lock again. And Emily rolled a 29 this time. Therefore, we now have two out of the three successes we need at DC 20 in order to pick this lock. And we'll do it one more time. Emily failed. We still need one more success, but we didn't actually break anything. One more time. And Emily rolled a 22, which is going to be our third success. The lock is now picked, and we can now open the door and allow Craig to come out. Craig might not have their items, might not have their weapons, or might not have their armor, but Craig is no longer in a cell at the very least. Now let's go ahead and take it back a second here, and let's say that when Emily failed, Emily made a noise. If Emily made a noise, maybe she attracted the attention of some guards. Well, there's some guards right here behind the door. And we could go ahead and start an encounter from here. Roll for initiative and go ahead and continue to attempt to pick the lock. Because if we go ahead and bring up the pick a lock action, pick a lock does take two actions in order to be performed, but you can actually still do it when you are in counter mode. However, you just might have someone trying to hit you from behind when you're trying to do it. Now, I do hope that you like this little playthrough of Pick a Lock. I thought I'd bring it into Foundry because it has some interesting mechanics and some things that you can do with it, and it is really nice to have as opposed to trying to force everything open and just breaking stuff. Once again, you could be trying to pick a lock on a treasure chest and you could break what's inside of it if you're not careful. So it is good to have someone in your party who is trained in thievery and has a thieves toolkit on them. Now, I do hope you like this video, and if you did, feel free to like, subscribe, or hit that notification bell. But whatever you do, I hope you have a great day and happy adventuring. Thanks.